Okay, in this video I'm going to show you a way to determine the relative velocity of uh, an airplane and it's going to involve adding vectors. Now this method of adding vectors is going to be when the angles aren't at 90 degrees but they're at some other angle. This is going to be true for forces or momenta or velocities, accelerations, anything that's a vector we can do the method that you're going to see here. So to frame the problem, we have an airplane that's flying at 350 kilometers an hour west, 30 north, and then a jet stream is acting upon it with a velocity of 55 kilometers an hour, and that causes it to go east, 45 north. I want to know the resultant velocity of the plane and then determine its displacement after three hours. I believe I'm going to need two videos to do this. So in part one, we'll see how far we can get along. But our method that we're going to use here involves drawing the vectors tip to tail, then breaking each vector up into x and y components. Then you, once you do that, you can treat the x and y components independently. So we will add up all the x components, or subtract them, and then deal with the y components separately. Once you've treated all the x and y components for all your vectors separately, then you can use the total x and the total y to get a resultant vector when everything's done. So, like I say, we'll see how far we get with the first video here. And we've got lots of time. So we'll start by drawing method one, or uh, step one says to draw the vectors. And so I see I need to draw a west 30 north, and I need it to have a length roughly, we're not going to draw it to scale, but of 350 kilometers an hour. To draw west 30 north, I start in the western direction, and then I go north. And so if I've drawn that correctly, then from start to finish, an angle of 30 degrees, this would be 350 kilometers per hour, and that will be, we'll call it V1. Now the second vector, I should draw tip to tail. Tip to tail means that where one vector ends, the other one is going to begin. So to draw them tip to tail, I'm going to take the second vector, and I'm going to draw it east 45 north, which means starting with my second vector, we will go east first, and then 45 north, and its length, is only going to be 55 kilometers per hour. Now this is not drawn to scale. 55 should only be a fraction of my 350, but I wanted to just draw it so I have enough room to fill it in. This one here will be 45. Okay, so that's really step one. Draw the vectors tip to tail, and then step two is to break everything up into X and Y components. So we need to figure out the x components for each vector and the y components. So we have, I've called this red one v1, and the green vector we might as well call velocity 2. Now, for the red one, <coughs> this v1 here has an x component, so I'm going to call it v1x. It's the horizontal part of v1. This vertical part will be v1y, so v1x is off to the left on your screen or the western direction. V1Y is up or north. That being said, V2 has a direction to the right or east. We will call that V2X. And this northern part will be V2Y. Now to calculate each of those components, we need to rely on some trigonometry here. So sticking with the, uh, we'll, we'll look at the red triangle here. We're going to use the angle of 30 degrees and the hypotenuse of 350. We're going to use those two numbers to try and figure out Vx and Vy by using the cosine of 30 and the sine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side to 30 is V1x, and the hypotenuse is 350. So we can solve this, or rearrange it, to get V1x by itself. 
V1x is going to be 350 times the cosine of 30 degrees. So V1x is going to be, if we can get this turned on, 350 times the cosine of 30 degrees. That gives us 303.1. That would be kilometers per hour, I guess. Now, sine 30, to do the other side of the triangle, that's opposite over hypotenuse. So sine 30 would be V1y over 350. So again, solving for V1y, it's going to be 350 times the sine of 30. Sine of 30 is a half so you'd get exactly 175 kilometers per hour is V1y. Now I have to pay particular attention to my signs here. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. Anything that is going in this direction to the west should be negative according to that. So I'm going to make the V1x negative 303. Just slip it in down here and my V1y is north, anything north should be positive, so I'm going to make sure I've considered it and I'm going to put a positive that's on there. Now I'm going to switch over to the color green and do the upper triangle. Our upper triangle, we know for 45 we're going to do cos and sine 45. Cosine of 45 is the adjacent side, V2x, over the hypotenuse, which is 55. So to get V2x, we cross multiply here, V2x is going to be 55 times the cosine of 45, so that's 0.7071 times 55, 55 times cos 45 gives us 38.9. Well, it's a good thing you know about a 45 degree triangle with 90 is that these are, it's an isosceles triangle, so the V2x and the V2y are both the same. You can work it out with sine 45, but you will get 38.9, trust me. So we get kilometers per hour and kilometers per hour. Now we need to think of our directions again. V2x was off and to the east, so it is a positive. V2y was north, so again, it's a positive number. So now we've completed step two, where step two said to break each vector up into x and y coordinate or components. We've done that. Now we're ready to move on to step three. But looking at the time, I'm going to stop here, and we're going to pick up at step three and four in the next video.